Hi, this is Joe Slack, designer of King of Indecision by Analog Game Studios. I'm going to walk you through the rules and game setup so you can start King of Indecision quickly. First, lay out all the components on the table. You'll notice there are various different goods, so you'll want to group them by that type of goods. There are wheat, silk, spice, stallions, gold, and peacocks. Next, you're going to take the round marker and place it on round one of the scoreboard. Determine the first player and give them the crown. Each player will receive a reference card, which we'll walk through, and an offering card. Players will determine their starting color. Let's say we're playing a three-player game and players choose white, orange, and green. We're going to locate the starting market tile, which is the only tile that's double-sided with a market on each side. Players will place one of their meeples on this starting tile. They will also place one on the start space of the scoreboard. Next, we're going to go through the deck setup and the tiles so we can get started. Next, we're going to set up the deck. We're going to split out the deck into three piles. The replenish cards, which are indicated by the green headers or red headers. The demand cards, which are indicated by the purple headers. And the end card, which has a purple header and a crown, and it indicates the game has finished. We're going to look at each of these decks of cards to explain what's in each deck. First, the increased stock card. When this card is drawn, you will add one token of this type anywhere you see the symbol on any of the hex tiles. So even if there are tokens already on that tile, you'll be adding one additional one. So these can pile up. Next, we have the sow wheat cards. In this case, we're only replenishing the empty wheat fields. So any wheat fields that have no wheat tokens on them will get three wheat tokens added. Next, increase stock to anything that's on the current demand card. Let's say the current demand card indicates stallions or silk. In that case, we would put stallions on any tile that has stallions represented, and we will put a silk token anywhere that we see a silk token on the board. And finally, increase anything not on the current demand card. So in that example, where we have stallions and silk on the demand card, we're going to replenish everything but those, excluding wheat. So anywhere we see a peacock, we're going to add a peacock token. Anywhere we see gold, we're going to add a gold token. And finally, anywhere we see spice, we're going to add a spice token. Even if they already have a token on them, we will just be adding one more. Next, we're going to look at the demand deck. There are a few different types of demand cards. For example, you could have the simple demand. The king wants one thing. In this case, the king wants stallions. So you would load up your offering card with stallions. The next type is the king wants two different things. He wants stallions and silk in this case. So you could load up your demand card with stallions or silk or both. Let's say at the end of the round when the new demand card is pulled, you have three stallions and two silk on your card. That would count as five in total and that's what you would be offering the king. Finally, we have the or card. In this case, the king wants the most spice or the most gold but not both. So you could load up your card with both of them, but in that case, he's only going to take the one you have more of. So if you had three spice and only one gold, he would take the three spice and you would take back your gold. So in this case, you really want to be offering him one or the other, because that's all he's going to take. Finally, we have the end card. This will show up sometime after the fifth demand card comes. And when this card is flipped over, you will score the fifth and final round. Then, any player who has resources left over will score one point for every five resources, any types of goods combined. At that point, you will check the scores, and the player with the most points will be the winner. Now I'm going to walk you through the setup for the decks. First, take the Replenish deck and shuffle it. Make five equal piles of three cards each. Next, we take the demand cards. 
shuffle this deck, and you will place one on each of the first four piles. Then you will take the end card and place it on the fifth deck. Take one additional demand card and set it aside. You're going to shuffle each of these decks starting with the end deck and stack them one upon the other. This way the end card will be the last demand that is played. And take that demand card you set aside and place it on top. That will be the first demand card. The first demand card is only going to be revealed after everybody has taken their turn and the first player token is moved to the next player. At this point, we know what the king is going to want first. At the end of every round, after all players have taken all their actions, rotate the first player token to the next player and flip over the new card. Do what it says in terms of increasing or replenishing and then tuck it underneath. Or if it's a new demand card, tuck it under the current one for the moment, score the current demand, and then replace it with the new demand. This is now what the king is going for and what you'll want to put on your offering card. Next, we'll select starting hex tiles to get the starting board and we can start to play. As you can see, we've got the market tile with each player having one meeple on here to start. You're gonna to wanna to leave a lot of space all the way around because you're gonna be building out as the game progresses. You're gonna start drawing tiles and place them all around the board. If you ever encounter another market tile, set that one aside and keep drawing. You can place that market tile into the deck and shuffle it if you choose. Next, we're going to put all the goods of those types onto these tiles. Because whenever we have a new tile opened up, we always add all the goods of that type to that tile. Next, I'm going to walk you through all the different types of actions you can take on your turn. I'm going to be playing as the orange meeple, so I can show you exactly everything you can do. At the start of the game, you have one worker, and you can take up to three actions on your turn. Some of these actions include being able to move to an adjacent tile. You can see that some tiles have two symbols on them, but this is still considered one tile. So every movement you make would cost you one action. You can take all the goods of one type from a tile, and that will cost you one action. So I could take all the spice, that would cost me one action. If I want all the silk, that would cost me a separate action. As you can see, wheat comes in threes. So I could use one action to take all three wheat at once. But take note, the king never wants wheat. He will never ask that on his demand card. However, wheat is useful whenever you want to make a trade or hire new workers. Next, you can explore. So, you're going to take a worker, choose which worker you have, if there's more than one, and indicate where you want to build out. So I'm going to choose this worker here. I only have one at the moment. And I'm going to get a new tile. Now I can place this adjacent on either side, but I can't build out a path out here. So I'm going to add this over here, and immediately this tile is replenished with goods. I can also make a trade. So, if I place myself on a market tile, I'm allowed to make a trade. Let's say I have all these goods right now, and the king right now wants stallions. I can make trades in quantities of two of the same good for one. So, in this case, I could trade, let's say, six wheat and two of my spice. That's a total of eight resources, and I'm grouping them by twos. So I'm gonna take those eight, and I'm going to take four stallions. I've done eight for four. And I have what the king wants now. Also, as you're exploring and moving out, you might find another market tile. Movement to those tiles is one action. So, you can travel to an adjacent tile for one, or you can travel between any markets on the board, regardless of distance, for one action. Another action you can take is hiring more workers. This is helpful because it allows you to explore further out, and when you gain your third worker, you'll get more actions. 
You'll have to take all three actions of your turn, plus spend goods in order to hire more workers. The second worker you hire is going to cost you three resources of any type. So let's say I spend these three resources, I would get a new worker. They can start on any market tile or wherever I am. So even if I was out here, I could place the new worker here or any other market tile. If I wanted to get my third and final worker, I would have to spend six goods and all three actions. So let's say I spent three wheat in this case, but it could be any combination of goods to hire a new worker. Again, I can place them where I already am or any other market tile. Hiring a third worker unlocks an extra action. So now on your turn, you can take four actions instead of three. All your actions are always split amongst workers. So you can do your four actions when you have th those workers between three. Finally, and most importantly, you can make an offering to the king. Now this is the only way you're gonna be able to score points. So let's say in this case, the king wants stallions. I could load one, I could load two, I could load all. I can load any amount of stallions on my card for one action. Now again, this is the only way to score points because when the king changes his mind at the end of the round, whoever has stallions on the card will be able to score points. But if you don't have anything on your card, you won't be able to score points. Let's say the current demand is stallions. At the end of the turn, after everybody's taken all of their actions, we'll rotate the first player marker to the next player clockwise and immediately flip the next event card. If it is a replenish card, we'll replenish those items on the board. However, if it's a new demand card, we're gonna tuck it underneath the current demand card and score this one. In this case, I have four stallions, so I could potentially score depending on what other players have on their card. Once the scores have been taken, remove these and put them back into the kingdom. And we'll move, move on with the next goal. Let's get to the all important scoring. Right now, let's say the demand is the most spice. You can see all of the players have been loading offerings on their cards for spice to the king. At the end of the round, after everybody has taken their turn, we'll flip over a new event card. If it's a new demand, we're just going to tuck that under the current demand card and score this current demand card. As you can see, green has the most on their card with five spice. So, as indicated by the round marker, we're in round one. We're gonna score three points for first place for green. Orange comes in second because they have three and they will score two points. White has the third most with two and will score one point. Let's say, for example, white actually had three on there and it was a two-way tie between orange and white. In this case, we would take the two scores and combine them together. Two plus one is three. Divide by the number of players sharing that score, by, that's two, and you'll get to 1.5. That would round up to two points, so each player would move on to two. Next, we'll move the round marker to two and we'll clear off everybody's cards for everything that they have offered. That will go back to the kingdom. And we will replace the demand card with the new demand card. Now all players are going for either the most peacocks or silk, not both. They can go for one or the other. Let's say for a moment there were actually four players playing and we were scoring the first round on spice. In this case, yellow actually had less than all the other players. So we would still score first, second, and third but yellow as fourth place would not be able to score any points. However, they would be able to keep their resources and take them off the offering card and use them at a later time. And we move on to the next round.